Hey everyone, I'm Steve from GamersNexus.net and today we're talking about something pretty cool and fun but not super applicable to the real world, but still interesting to know. We ran tests on two very similar, effectively identical liquid coolers using one major difference and that is the cold plate metal. So we have an aluminum cold plate here on Asetex 510LC and a copper cold plate on the 550LC and the question I set out to answer was when you have a high efficiency cooling unit for CPU cooling, like a liquid cooler, does the metal type, does the cold plate still bear significant relevance on the cooling potential of that device when mounted to a CPU under load? And so we put our CPU under 100% load, we tested it overclocked and stock using a 4790K, certainly not the world's hottest CPU, but for these CPU coolers it works just fine. And we found a couple of measurements that were interesting, but uh, perhaps not too unexpected. For the specs, both of these coolers are 120 millimeters. We mounted them to the same fan. It's our, our test bench fan, 120 millimeter fan. And both of them are 27 millimeters in width or thickness, depending on what you want to call it. And they both use the Gen 5 Asetek pump, Gen 5 Asetek everything. So for point of reference, uh, other current Gen 5 Asetek devices would include the Corsair H100i GTX, the H80i that's brand new, and any other GTX line Corsair unit that's come out this year. Those are all Gen 5 Asetek pumps. And basically, Corsair goes to Asetek or other suppliers like Cool IT. They say, we want to buy this product and make these modifications to it and then sell it as whatever they end up selling it as. So it's not like they're just buying it off a shelf. There are some actual tweaks going on behind the scenes. But at the end of the day, the coolers that are supplied to Corsair, to NZXT, to other providers are generally coming from either Asetek or one of a few other manufacturers. In this case, we've got the 510 and 550 LC units. Both of these are available through the system integrator channel. So if you go to like CyberPower or iBuyPower, you will find both of these units normally, or at least the 510 LC on one of them. In terms of branded manufacturer models, the 550 LC is out there and branded under Corsair's flag. So that is an available product to the end user. The test we look at, is aluminum versus copper in this instance. So aluminum has a thermal conductivity of almost half coppers. It's about 205 watts per meter Kelvin for 25 Celsius load, thermal load. And copper is 401 watts per meter Kelvin for the same 25 Celsius load. And what we looked at here was how much thermal dissipation potential exists in these coolers per 100 watts. And we found the difference, as you'll see in these charts, to be about 0.8 Celsius per 100 watts for the CPU. CPU generates about 88 watts, and then after overclocking, there's a, a couple more watts thrown onto that. And the biggest difference is in our overclock test. It's 1.1 Celsius difference in thermals between the copper and aluminum cold plates, favoring copper, of course, because it does have that higher rating. But the difference for the non-overclock test is even smaller. One thing that this does tell us is that with hotter CPUs, maybe like AMD's FX line, it's possible that there will be a greater difference. These coolers are not rated to, to cool some of the hotter CPUs out there. They're certainly not rated to cool the 220 watt CPUs, so we just can't even test that. But for what we're looking at, the difference between aluminum and copper for a highly efficient liquid cooler when cooling something like the 4790K or other high-end Intel devices the difference is effectively non-existent. It is barely measurable. It's just outside of margin of error, but only just. And the reason for this is possibly and likely because the efficiency of the pump is so great that the aluminum and the copper, even with a 2x difference in thermal conductivity, just doesn't matter as much. And the way these radiators work, just as a recap if you don't know, is very simple. This is the pump. It sits on top of the CPU. And the pump is where there's basically a little propeller inside of the, uh, the enclosure that we see. That propeller spins and it pushes liquid down into sort of a channel below the top of the pump. And when the liquid goes into that channel, it flows through what are called micro fins in the cold plate surface. And this is something I've actually done videos on with Antec and Corsair in the past, if you check the channel for those. So the, the liquid flows through these micro fin channels and there are hundreds of them, depending on which cooler you buy, that connects directly to the smooth cold plate that we see here, 
which connects to the CPU, the IHS more specifically, and then you've got the thermal interface in between there to fill any imperfections. When the liquid goes through the microfins, it is propelled back up into the other tube, goes through the radiator, and then if you know how a radiator works in a car, it's the same thing here or any other device really. Basically the liquid flows through these tiny channels in the radiator. The fins on the radiator, the aluminum fins, will siphon off heat. They conduct heat away from the channels that the liquid flows through, and then the fan blows that heat away so it can cycle and repeat like that. So that is how a radiator works. And because it is a highly efficient system, the metals don't matter as much. Now, one thing to note with air coolers, the difference between aluminum and copper could be pretty substantial. We don't know, we haven't tested it, but the reason for that is because they're more reliant on metal. There's a huge piece of metal sitting on top of the CPU if you use an air cooler. So if you replace all of that copper, all the copper heat pipes, the copper base plate, the copper whatever else you've got, if it's an older heat sink, maybe copper fins as well. If you replace that with aluminum, there could actually be a performance difference that's substantial. I don't have two effectively identical copper and aluminum coolers. That's pretty hard to come by. I do believe I could probably grab some old Zalman ones. We might test that. But just for liquid, basically the same. So that is it for this video. Check out our Patreon page if you like this sort of content and want to help us do more of it. And I will see you all next time.